Hello, everyone. Good evening. So it's great to be here again, make this presentation. Uh, Livia invited me yesterday to, to bring this presentation. It was already performed in Portuguese, I think, about a month ago. And it is a translation. And actually, important choices here. That's the, the theme of the reflection of the night. So every day we are doing decisions and choices, right? So if you probably 10, 12 a day. So the time that you're going to wake up until the time that you're going to sleep, you perform decisions, you make the right choice that you think it's uh, the right one. So, but for the reflection of the night, we are going to talk about a decision that most of us, we didn't think about that. If you decide to suffer well or to suffer badly, that's an important choice, right? Because we all suffer. We all suffer here. We incarnate it, we suffer. Sometimes it's because we cause it, sometimes it's because someone could cause it to us, but we are in the middle of the suffering. So it's an important choice here. So it's up to us to decide if we are gonna suffer well or badly. So let's try to make this reflection and understand suffering, why we suffer. So there's no exceptions here. Everybody incarnated here, everyone that is incarnated, we're gonna suffer. So of course, we are, there's no privileges on that. So it's a reflection based in the chapter five of the gospel according to spiritism. And uh, Kardec brought to us this small paragraph here in this topic. When facing sufferings or obstacles, if you are able to place yourself above the situation, okay, imagine you above the situation, and managing to dominate the impulses of impatience, anger, and despair. So impatience will suffer, will solve our suffering? Of course not. Anger will solve, will, will solve? No. Despair? Of course not. So put them aside. Then you may say to yourself with just satisfaction, I was the stronger. I supersede that thing. So that's why we are here. We are gonna, we are gonna, we are gonna face proofs and atonements. And at the end, if you remember, so most of us here suffer some time. So if you think about the suffering and what happened after that, if you improve, what you learn from the suffering, that's the key. So think about how much you learn from that. So that's the reflection of the night, right? This picture in the background, I would like you to keep in your, in your mind. We're gonna recall this picture at the end. And there is no coincidence for, for this presentation, for sure. So when I was invited, I did, it was not uh, scheduled for today. It should be scheduled for the end of the month. But today is Easter, right? So keep that image, we're gonna talk about that at the end. References for the for this reflection. We've got the Gospel according to Spiritism, as I said. We've got also the Spirit's book. Those are the main references. We should not dismiss them, of course, to understand what, what is a well and badly suffering. And I like to bring also Joana de Angelis with the self-discovery, which is a great book where she presents the basics or the basics of a self-knowledge. And to understand the suffering and to make our choice if we're gonna suffer well or badly, it's very important to know the, the self-knowledge, to practice the self-knowledge. So those three references here, I would suggest if you're interested in going further, so try to get this book, The Self-Discovery, and take a look into that, okay? Okay, so to understand suffering, so let's place the suffering under the context that we are living. So that's our earth, right? Our earth to reach from 
that point here, the very, very beginning, until nowadays, look at that, how much suffering happened here. So there's no reason for us to imagine that the earth was created like it is nowadays. It came from a ball of fire. Change it, change it, change it, change it. By the God of hand, by the by the the hand of God, until nowadays, and it's continue, right? It's going up, it's evoluting. So why I'm bringing that thing? It's for us to understand. I think most of you uh, is familiar with this this thing, but let's refresh our minds here. So the different categories of uh, of worlds. Let's understand that thing here, and we are participating on that thing. Our mind is collaborating on this uh, evolution of the earth in terms of a spiritual mind, psychosphere. So the, the evolution here is coming from a primitive world. So remember the earth before the man is, is, in the, is, uh, is incarnated here? It's very weird, it's, uh, it's, we cannot be living there. So, but here the primitive world is where we start the first incarnations. Very, very beginning, right? Then, because we are moving up, we are improving our, our mind, our morals, we are going this direction here, there's no way to go back. We are not going back, we are always going up, that's the good news. And we are right now, right here. So in a world of tests and atonements and the world of regeneration, that's what we are listening from all the, all the message that we are receiving. We are right here. So what is the difference between this world right here and this one right here? Evil predominates here. As we are, we are seeing right here, right? And they, they are everywhere. So unfortunately, that's the situation. And in the regenerating one, it's better. The evil is still is going to be uh, in the regenerating world as well, but not as much as here. And we can't perceive that thing. Look at that. If we go back 200 years, 300 years, not so much considering this long-term evolution from the earth. 300, 300 years back, slavery is a pretty common one, right? What do you think about slavery right now? No way, right? No way to think that someone is leaving another, another human being. No way, we improve. You don't see anyone hanging in a, in a hope in the street. About 200 years ago, you can see that. And people applause that situation. So the, the humankind never faced it uh, a long period like we are living right now without major wars. Think about that. If you think about the history of the man, so our last wo world war was about 100 years ago, almost 80 years ago. So it's a long term for the humankind without any major conflict. We are improving. But the problem is the news. So the news just present the bad stuff. So try to take a look into the, the big picture. We are getting better. We are getting better. So that's our situation here. We are moving up. And I don't know how long does it take. We don't know. Could take 1,000 years. Could take 2,000 years, 5,000. We don't know. But we are in this direction. For the souls that are not appropriate to live here, they are going to be invited to, be, to incarnate in another world that would be more appropriate for their evaluation. But the earth will improve, will go in this direction. Okay? How can the earth go in this direction? We are responsible for that. We are the ones who are going up along with the earth. We are creating this environment. Right now, we are here. 99.9999% of the, the humankind is right here. 
third order, but we are moving up. The same situation as the Earth, we are not going back. We are going up until we reach the first order that will take, I don't know, billions, zillions. Really? We should not care about that thing. We just need to move up. But to move from here to here, or to move up in this direction, what we need? What we need? Reincarnate. Reincarnate? It's a, it's a process to improve, yeah. right? The way that we are going to... It's like you're going to school. So you need to go to school to make the exam. The reincarnation will be, let's go to school and make the exam. Let's see if you pass. And then we are going that thing. So what we need is to improve our mind. To improve our mind, unfortunately, we need to suffer. That's the way. So we are not here. We are not, any pre we are not coming here to not face proofs or to not, to not face any atonements. We are coming here to do that thing. So the, the way that we are going to approach the suffering, it depends only on us. So it's our decision to say, I'm going to suffer well, I understand my suffering, and I'm going to supersede that. It's only us. No one will do that thing for us. And then we are going to have, we are, we are going to be the co-creators. That's the meaning of the co-creation. We are all co-creation with God. We are co-creating the earth. We are we are developing the earth along with God. Make sense? Absolutely, right? So, now let's understand what is suffering, this concept. So suffering, if I ask to any one of you, you're going to tell me a different feeling about suffering, right? A suffering, oh, I'm feeling a suffering, I'm feeling a pain in my back, I'm feeling something, so I... I hit my car in an accident, so I'm suffering because I don't have money to pay the, the insurance and so on. So each one of us will face a suffering in a different way. So let's understand what exactly is suffering. This is from Joana de Angelis. Actually, suffering is a natural occurrence of the evolutionary process that we are facing right now. It's natural. It's not something that you are not the one that are going to suffer more than any other. If you are saying that, if you think yourself that I'm suffering a lot, you're going to find millions of people that will suffer more than you. And you are not, you cannot support 10 minutes of his life. Right? So it's, it's a situation that we think not only on us, but we need to think us inserted in a, in a big picture, in a whole context. So the challenge is to the resistance of the being. So we are, we are challenged every day. When we are, even when we are sleeping, right? We are being challenged. So the objective of the, the suffering is our intellectual and moral improvement. If the man in the very beginning when he was living inside caves, so they are suffering a lot. Cold weather, hot weather, food. But they improve. They develop their intellectual uh, uh, features. They develop their interact, intellectual uh, skills. And also the moral one. They try to live together in society. One helping each other. If they didn't suffer, they didn't improve. There's a theory about the, the Indians. Because the Indians, it's, uh, they have everything in their hands. If they want a food, they go there, get the fish. If they want something, they go there. It seems that they don't suffer to improve. They don't have any challenge to improve. And they stay in that situation. They don't evolve in terms of society, in terms of uh, intellectual. Make sense? So we need that suffering situation to improve. So if you see the, I'm saying about the material world. So if you see the, the great wars that man has faced, most of the technological improvements we had was during the war because they were suffering. They were, they were in the conflict. They need to improve. They need to think. It's intellectual, not moral, but intellectually. Okay? So the suffering is a natural, is a natural occurrence. 
and it's a key that Joana de Angelis also presented to us. Suffering is a, is a good example of a cause and effect law. Suffering is the effect. Suffering is not the cause. Suffering is the effect. So let's understand that every suffering you've, you've got, there is a cause. Maybe, maybe we cannot see the cause right now. Maybe it's a cause coming from another incarnation, from a previous incarnation. But most of the sufferings were created in this incarnation. So at least one cause we should identify, we are able to identify. That's part of the self-knowledge, right? We understand ourselves. I'm suffering on that thing because of what? What's bringing me this kind of suffering? So using this concept of a cause and effect, let me bring to you the, there's a Japanese, the guy was a specialist in the quality systems and he invented this diagram here. It's a very simple one as you can see, but it's very important for you to improve qualities in the manufacturing process. So if you've got a, a part of uh, equipment that is defective, they need to understand what caused this defect in this piece. So this diagram here is basically this thing here. So we've got the causes affecting the suffering, the, the, the effect. In our case here, we are gonna make the analysis in the suffering. So let's try to identify what kind of causes could cause uh, as a suffering, could generate a suffering on us. Joana de Angelis brought four. Can someone imagine what are the four ones, the four aspects of a, of a suffering? Let's guess, we got time. Give me one, just one, at least one of the four. Sorry? Ego is part of one of that thing. It's part. It's a sub part. It's part. So you are you are just doing something that's more spiritual. Let me show you the four one. Let me burn your curiosity here. Four. Okay. Physical, moral, emotional, and spiritual. Joana de Angel is fantastic, right? She break down that thing into four. Now it make logic. Of course, it's not one alone. Maybe sometimes you've got causes affecting the other one. You've got a physical one that will affect your, your moral and so on. But if you, if you try to, to understand yourself and try to split, I'm suffering right now, for example, and then you can imagine, is this moral, is this physical, is this emotional or is this spiritual? Think about that thing, and then you can understand the cause. We've got, a, we've got a quote in engineering that if you understand the problem, if you know the problem, you solve the problem, you solve 50% of the problem. So if we understand the, the problem, the cause, we solve our suffering by 50%, right? So let's go deeper on each one of those folders right here, those binders here. Let me depict each one and bring to our reflection what we need to do to think in terms of what is the physical thing that is causing me a, a suffering? What's the moral one, emotional and spiritual? Okay? Let's see the physical first. What is the physical? It's basically, that's also Joana de Angelis who brought to us that thing. It's a degenerative process of cellular and psychological organization. For example, a pain in the knee, a pain in the back. So what could cause that thing? Could be something that you inherit, it's hereditary, it's in your DNA, which is part of your reincarnation planning. So when we reincarnate, we have a planning. Maybe you, okay, you decided with your mentors that you should suffer some kind of uh, liver disease or some kind of, of disease that it's planted. Or it's because you make a mistake against your body. 
So hope that there's no smoker here, but if you smoke a lot, you know that you're gonna cause problems in your lungs, right? It's not something from the, the previous incarnation, it's something that you cause it right now. So if you try to make sports and you, and you, and you hit yourself and broke your leg or something, that's something that you cause right now. It's not something, sometimes it's not planted in your incarnation, right? So that's the physical situation. And what is important here is for us, right now the science is deciphering the DNA. The DNA is our reincarnation planning in terms of physical life. Everything is here. So the scientists are discovering that thing. Right now I think they only, they only decipher, I think about 10%, 15% only of the DNA. So look at that, how much we included in our reincarnation planning. Okay, and this suffering, the physical one, what requires? It requires, of course, a proper medical treatment, but it's important. It can be alleviated by the action of the mind on the body. So positive thinking, resignation. So if we understand the cause, so if I, if I broke my, my arm playing something that I should not play. So why I be furious, I be anger? So you did a thing, you choose to play and you broke your arm. So now be patient, keep positive and move forward. Okay, that's the physical one. The next one is the moral. This one is, a, this is important, right? The moral one, it's something that we don't perceive, but it's when we make mistakes against the moral laws. The moral laws are the divine laws. It's, uh, it will never change. Those are the, the laws that we, we face it in the very past, in the very future. And nowadays, of course. It's about 10 laws here. Kardec presented, described it pretty well, those laws in the Spirit's book. So I'll not go deeper on them because it will be maybe one presentation for each law, maybe, right? But basically we've got the law of adoration, the law of labor, reproduction. Uh, this one is, uh, let me read here. Preservation. Preservation, destruction, socialization, progress, equality and liberty. All of them embraced by justice, love and charity. So if we play against, if we make some kind of uh, activity against those laws, of course we are gonna suffer, we're gonna have a consequence. And the consequence was a moral suffering. You're gonna sleep in your, in, your, in your pillow, you put your head in your pillow, you're gonna suffer your head very heavy. That's a consequence of a, maybe a moral law that you play against. Can be either due to moral mistakes in previous incarnations or mainly in this incarnation. Okay, sometimes you've got a, you are in trying to recover some mistake that you made in a previous life, but most of the cases we cause it right here. So how can we, how can we uh, make a better approach against this type of suffering? Rationalization, understand what we did wrong against any of those laws. Understand the laws, that's the basic. And then what I did wrong against those laws. What I can do right to avoid, to repeat my mistake. That's an important thing. Self-knowledge, right? So moral effort for good. So we need to, to put our effort in terms of a goodness. So try to to learn and understand those laws right here and try to abide them. That's important thing as well, self-forgiveness. Sometimes we don't play self-forgiveness and self-forgiveness, if we could summarize here, it's basically, we, it's always possible to make a new future, a new future. 
future. Always possible to make a new future. Okay, the past is to learn, and the future we are creating right now. And the basic for that thing is a self-forgiveness. You cannot go back and change the past, but you can always make a new future. future. Right? Any questions here? The third one, emotional. Emotional usually arise from psychological disorders that will reflect in our emotions. So a lot of panic, a lot of uh, impulsive actions. They can be either due to internal factors, for example, a trauma. It's pretty common, right? We got a trauma, and then we are nervous if we face that, that thing again. So, for example, I know my wife, she's very scared about frogs and lizards. So I like them, by the way. I like frogs and lizards. But she's very scared about it. She cannot see any, any one of them. Maybe it's a trauma. I don't know. That's one example. External as well. External will be a consequence of the environment, social relationship, could cause some kind of panic on you that you cannot move forward. But you need to understand what is causing that thing. What is the cause of that? How can we deal with that? Of course, psychiatric, psychological treatment, along with, once again, rationalization. Think about it, self-knowledge. So if you talk to a psychologist, or to us, to a psychologist, he will try to make the self-knowledge on you. Let me understand your past. Let me understand why are you suffering like that. And the last binder, the last folder here, spiritual. Spiritual, it's a consequence of the, this, uh, not the consequence, this cause is related to the, to the soul, right? Only to the soul. Caused by the relationship with other spirits. So it could be spirits incarnated or disincarnated. So this, relation, this kind of relationship could cause any conflict. And this conflict will promote a suffering. Right? Can be either due to the past incarnations or the current incarnation. How can we deal with that? Appropriate spiritual treatment. It's a basic. And our, this location right here, every Wednesday, right, Valdo? Wednesday is the spiritual treatment. Fraternal counseling. Fraternal counseling, right. Every Wednesday here. So that improves a lot your, in terms of your causes in the spiritual binder, the spiritual folder. Once again, look at that, self-knowledge. I'm talking about self-knowledge all the time. But this is Joana de Angelis. She enforces self-knowledge all the time. And once again here, rationalization of the source. Sometimes we are talking, we like to, we like to, to tell that the cause is from outside. It's a spiritual that is obsessing me. But sometimes it's me that I'm obsessing another spirit. Or a self-obsession. I'm obsessing myself. Imagine, so let's make a rough calculation here. So uh, the man is on earth for about 100,000 years, right? 100,000 years. Let's consider that, that approach. So we start to incarnate here. So each incarnation will take about every 100 years, every 200 years, in average. So how many incarnations we should have we, we had here in the, on Earth. It's an average, right? 2,000. 2,000. Let's consider, okay, let's place a cut, 1,000. So all this 1,000 incarnation are inside you. So we've got a crowd here. Inside each one of us, we've got a crowd, different ones inside, sometimes fighting to each other. So self-obsession. 
It happens, right? Make sense here, the four binders? Binder one. Just one spirit, yeah, a crowd of personalities, let's say that. It's a crowd of personalities, different experience, right? It's not different uh, souls, of course, right? Number one, physical. Number two, moral. Number three, emotional. Number four, spiritual, right? Four binders that we can identify the causes of our suffering. Maybe you've got two, maybe you've got three, maybe you've got the four. So it's up to you to identify the binders. How can we exercise the well-suffering? Okay, I told about suffering, 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 but what about the well-suffering? How can we exercise that thing? First of all, once again, self-knowledge, right? So if you, if you separate the four binders, you are doing a good exercise in self-knowledge. You are understanding yourself. What's causing me to suffer? It's a moral one, it's a spiritual one, or it's a moral and spiritual. It's a physical and moral. So you, you're playing your, your self-knowledge here. So intimate renewal and balance. So you become more balanced. When you, when you start your self-knowledge, you're gonna balance. So why I'm very impulsive, why I'm very anger? For no reason. Then you try to understand that thing and capture that and improve and improve and improve, okay? And the energy generated by a peaceful, peaceful conscience is responsible for the suffering relief. So there is no better way to put your head in the pillow without any heavy suffering mind, right? So that's, that's a consequence of a self-knowledge. Another thing to practice the well-suffering, practicing love and charity. Charity is not only to give money, it's not only to give food. Charity is benevolence, indulgence, and forgiveness, right? And mainly, if you could summarize the, the charity, that's the phrase here that Jesus brought to us, love, your neighbor as yourself. So that's the charity. So don't do to the others what do you want the others to do with you. So if, you, if we practice that, thing, that's practice, training, practice, that will make us a well-suffering instead of playing against, being anger against others. Right? Any questions here? Another way to exercise the well-suffering, maintaining a reasoned, a reasoned faith, understanding why I'm here, why I'm doing here, how can I improve? This picture right here, it's pretty common for us when we are in a hole to continue to dig. So the first thing that we should do is that stop digging and try to, try to find a way out of the... the the hole, right? Don't continue to dig. That's pretty common for us. We got a problem and dig, 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 and so the hole is big now. And we cannot take it out. It's more difficult to take it out. So reason of faith, understand. Why I'm doing here, trusting God, that's a basic. So I made a compromise when I incarnate with some stuffs. So trust in God. God will help you on pass on those proofs or atonements that I compromised before my incarnation. Trust on him, trust in God, trust in your, in your mentors. Another thing to, to maintain a reasonable, a reasonable faith is a correct channeling of, of thought. So if you are in the hole, don't think negative, think positive. Think in a way out, not in a way in. So, channel, positive thinking. Exercising patience. That's another way that we can, that we can uh, exercise the well-suffering. We need to understand the God's timing. 
So God's timing is not our timing. We are so, our anxiety forces us to be on a hurry, to be on a hurry, to be on a hurry. Hold on, slow down. Let's see if this is the right time. Sometimes we want something and we want something and we want something. And this thing never happened, never happened, never happened. So wait, because maybe it's not the right time for you. So believe on that thing. Understand that God's time, it's a, it's a key for the patience. And be careful when we ask. So we usually, when you go to sleep, make your prayer. We ask for, please God, give me patience. Be careful, because sometimes he will put you in a traffic jam. Every day in a traffic jam. So be careful what we ask, right? So understanding God's timing, it's a, it's a key. And face in the future, in the future, future. As I said, we cannot go back and change the past, but we can always, always change the, fu the, the future. We can always. It's only depending on us. Don't put the blame on others. Say, oh, I'm depending on on my husband, I'm depending on my wife. No, 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 you can do it. You can do it, you can change. It's up to you. Just think about it. Joana de Angelis, happy life. Joana de Angelis bring that, uh, bring to us this chapter here, chapter 72, which is a summary of everything, if you think about suffering, just get this chapter 72. Take a copy, put in your book, on your, in your nightstand. So let's read together that thing. So uh, bless each evolutionary opportunity with joy. Look at that, it's difficult. It's, it's difficult, but it depending only on us. It's possible, but it's only depending on us. You don't need to wait for anyone to, dis to, to make an opportunity of evolution with joy. Don't depend on anyone, just on you. The pain faced with resignation decreases. Look at that, the pain faced with resignation decreases in intensity. It's not saying maybe it will decrease decreases as much as it is born in silence it passes faster so resignation understand the cause understand the binders that joanna brought to us once we understand that thing it will make sense for us and then we'll become in silence it will pass faster you never face the sufferings that you do not deserve don't think that you are the only one suffering, being punished by God. No. It's because it's a compromise. It's caused by you. Only you is causing that kind of suffering. Think about that thing. Oh, it's because my, my husband did that thing. No, 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 no. Look at that. Think about the cause. Think if it's actually him or if it's you that you don't like what he's doing. Think about you. Don't blame others. Try to think about you. You never face the sufferings that you do not deserve. Just as you not stay on earth in an exceptional regime without facing them. There's no privileges here. God is just, is good and just. So everybody here compromise on some proofs and atonements. Maybe we're gonna suffer. Yeah, but we're gonna pass, depending only on us. God's law are the same for everyone. There's no privileges here. So no privileges here. Maybe you're gonna say, oh, this guy here is very rich. You don't know what he's suffering. Maybe you cannot stay in, in his life for five minutes, right? Consider only your life, consider your, your opportunity to, to, to improve. Replacing the love that is scarce that's a reality. Pain is the master that drives the spiritual improvement. I'm not saying that. Joanna Giannis said that thing, said that thing. And she is absolutely concise to summarize what we are doing here 
why we are suffering. Sometimes we are, oh, why I'm suffering? I'm the, so everybody's against me. And so stop, wait, think, reflect. Try to identify the binders, as she indicated, and move on. Right? It's an opportunity. Think every time we've got a suffering, every time we've got a conflict, it's an opportunity to improve. Okay, remember the, the picture, the first slide, where we saw Jesus? Let's just say here this phrase from the chapter 5. The same chapter that we presented in the in the very beginning. So God has often told you that he does not place heavy burdens on weak shoulders. So if it's too big, too much for you, it's not. It's not. It's because you are capable of supporting that. The burden is proportional to the strength as the reward will be to resignation and courage. So it's saying here, it's only up to us. Only up to us. So remember the picture? Let's make a reflection here. What Jesus brought to us, this is John 16, 33. So every time I have told you this thing so that in me you may have peace. Remember the picture in the very beginning? Jesus embracing someone that same suffering. I have told you this thing, so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. He didn't promise us some kind of, oh, you're going to be on vacation the whole life. No, of course not. What, what he said here, in this world, you have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. So bring, your, bring this picture that I presented in the very beginning. Every time we're suffering, go to him. Go to his message. Say a prayer. Understand the cause. Stay calm. That's an opportunity for improvement all the time. Every conflict is an opportunity. Don't think that the, the suffering or the, the conflict is a, it's something that someone is punishing you. No. It's an opportunity. An opportunity for improvement. Okay? And Olivia, thanks for, for inviting me for this presentation yesterday. Uh, I was reviewing last night when you asked me to make this presentation. And I perceived that it's Easter. And in, in Easter, we are going to remember Christ's suffering, right? And the way that he promoted his suffering in the Easter, it's an example for us. Can you, can you do something like that for the humankind? Of course not. Of course not. So it, it's amazing that you invited me, and this is exactly the key of this the reflection is suffering. And talk about suffering during the, the Easter. It's, it's so appropriate because it's a reflection that we should think about. It's your, it's your important choice. How do you like to suffer? you like to suffer well or badly? It's up to you. No one will make the decision on you. You are responsible for that decision. And I think that most of us would like to suffer well. How can we suffer well? Going to him. That's it. That's what he said. Look at that. Pretty simple. So that in me you may have peace. Learn about what he, what he indicated to us. Joana de Angelis presented a pretty good methodology for us to understand that. But at the end, we should come to him. Happy Easter to everyone. Thank you. Thank you.